How you doing? This is Andre Ward, and you're watching The Crystal Heart Show. It's the Super Six World Boxing Classic, which pits America's Andre Ward up against England's Carl Froch. It'll be Saturday, October 29th at Atlantic City Boardwalk Hall, and it'll be broadcast on Showtime. Certainly we have the ingredients of a tremendous and great, great fight. Both of the fighters determined to win the two preeminent super middleweights in the world. Both of them holding world titles. It's a unification bout. It's for the cup, of course. It's for the ring magazine belt. It takes place at the historic Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, a great venue. Once again, Saturday, October the 29th on Showtime. We are here with Andre Ward. <laughs> A little over seven years ago, I think you remember there was another news conference in New York that the U.S. Olympic Committee and USA Boxing had prior to the 2004 Olympics, and a lot of people hadn't heard of you then. The USA Boxing was talking about the two Andres, you and Andre Durrell. You, of course, won the gold medal. Now we're in another news conference in New York for this title unification fight. Can you talk a little bit about this long road that you did, first to the gold medal, now to the, to the, on the brink of the finals of this uh, historic it's tournament? Funny, it's funny you mentioned that. I was talking to my team on the way over here about being in Times Square, being with the Olympic team, and, and um, the event that took place with the media, like you just mentioned. It has been a long road. It's been a very tough road, but nobody said it was going to be easy. Um, you anticipate a tough road. You just don't know all the nuances and the ins and outs of it. But I, I have to say that I'm, I'm not satisfied, but I'm, I'm, I'm secure in where I am thus far, even though there's still a lot of work to be done. And I'm happy to be it to this point. You said earlier that your style is that of a chameleon, where and Carl Froch is claiming to have the edge in power in this fight, saying if there's going to be a knockout, he's going to be the one getting the knockout. What kind of call frauds do you expect? Because I know you're not going to give away your whole game plan or anything, but what kind of call frauds? Do you think he's going to be the same fighter that he's been in his, his most recent fight? Well, I think so. I think at 32 years old and fighting as long as he has, there's not, I don't want to say there's not much room for improvement, but there's, I don't think there's a, any drastic changes he can make. Uh, in this short period of time, but I, I expect the best call Frosh. That's what I do expect. And just because he feels like if there's a knockout that it's going to be him, doesn't make him right. That's just how he feels. Now, people would not be surprised if this fight goes the distance, and that obviously brings in the question of conditioning. And I know you've been training with Victor Conti, whom I interviewed recently. How, is, how has that helped you? training with somebody like that that you know some people obviously are still suspicious of Victor Conti's paid his dues and, and moved on but how has his training helped you well I, I don't train with Victor for the record we've worked with Victor in the past um, and to say what you know basically second what you said I think Victor's on the right track I think that you know he's got his head on straight and he's doing the right thing and I think he's uh he's getting opportunities to work with some big fighters and and to uh, redeem his name and I think he's on the right track but we don't currently work with Victor Conte. Okay. What, do you, what is going to be the issue of conditioning, again, because you're fighting in Atlantic City and you obviously have to be prepared for a 12-round fight, a f fight of this caliber? Well, I, I, you know, I don't, we've always been in top form and we train very, very hard. And um, regardless of what city the fight is in, I think that, you know, we got to be ready and we will be ready. With all the uh, decisions and controversy in various fights, Williams Lara fight, Agbeko Morris and all that, everybody seems to be making a statement about it except the fighters. Yeah. Do you think that there's any potential for the fighters to get together to create some type of union or association so they can have a voice in what's going on in boxing? I think a fighters union would be awesome. You know, I think that's something that I've talked about before that I would like to, uh, obviously it's not, you know, one man can't put that together, but it would have to be a collective, collective group, collective thing. But in terms of just the officiating, I think that, you know, there has been some, you know, especially this year, there's been some, you know, some, some bad officiating, but hopefully it doesn't persist and hopefully they, they get it cleaned up. And I think, you know, as we heard the uh, commissioner say here that, you know, we'll get that together and hopefully have the best team in New Jersey. All right. I want to wish you congratulations on staying in this tournament since there have been so many ups and downs in it, and we're at the precipice of the finals. So uh, good luck October 20th. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.